How's it going, viewers? Mr. Incredible Ronnie's back and he's rolling with the punches, baby. Welcome to a tier list video, specifically a ranking one. And yes, you read the title right. I am going to be doing a ranking tier list of all 13 Illumination movies. Yep, I'm referring to the same people who, you know, shot out the Despicable Me movies and all those crazy Minions memes. You just can't escape them, viewers. <laughs> you just can't. It's a trap. It's a trap. That's what it is. They shot all those movies with their fart gun. Well, that and also the Mario Bros. movie. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> but my point is, I thought it'd be nice to give my opinion on all the Illumination films. And I'm sure y'all have been wanting me to do it. Ever since my spoiler-free review of the Super Mario Bros. which you can check out. I will be doing a spoiler-filled review maybe next week when I watch the film again with my mother. But, um... So, yeah, don't worry about spoilers in this one. But don't wor worry about spoilers in for the other Illumination films, you know. And I don't know if this is in chronological order, but this is the best I can do. So, yeah, cue the music. Let's do this. <clears throat> Starting off with Illumination, we had Despicable Me from 2010. The one that started it all. Uh, I'll be honest with y'all, for a first movie, I thought it was great. Honestly, I think it's a great start to Illumination. They actually put a lot of thought into this one. The animation originally holds up pretty well. And I really like the characters. I think Gru as a character is really well done. How he's like a villain that's, just, that's all crazy and bad. But then he ends up becoming a good person. And ends up becoming, you know, a father for free. Adorable kids. You know, uh, Margot, Edith, and Agnes. Uh, I really like those, those kids. They are so much fun to hang around with. And the minions, surprisingly, didn't feel like they took a, a, took a, took a lot of the screen time. I was worried they would. But they didn't. They, they felt like side characters for the comedy. And I actually like that. They actually... They actually felt right. And I also think it's funny how Gru thinks the most evil thing to do is to, to literally steal the moon. I think that's just genius writing, in my opinion, really. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, there's nothing else I really want to say about it. I really enjoyed it, but there's just one issue I have with it. Just one. This film came out in 2010, the same year as Megamind, which is one of DreamWorks' best films. And I think they did the villain turning into the hero concept way better than this, this people when we can agree on that, viewers. And also, that movie has a character called Minion in it, voiced by David Cross. And guess what? He's like 10 times better than the Minions from Despicable Me. That's embarrassing, viewers. Can we admit that? <laughs> so yeah, for that reason, I have to give Despicable Me a solid A tier, you know? I think it's honestly a really good film overall. It's, um, it's fun to watch again and every now and then. And I think it's crazy how successful it was in the box office as well. Um, oh yeah, one last thing. Um, Vector as a villain. He's probably my favourite villain in the franchise overall. I, I just love Vector. He's just so goofy and his cough costume is silly. But I just love the way he acts, you know. Vector! That's me. Because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! I may have a crush on him, I'm just saying. Anyhow, let's see. Oh, gosh. Time for a terrible film. Hop. Yeah. Oh, boy. I feel so bad for James Marsden, who plays um, Fred in this movie. And, um, yes, this is the same guy who plays um, Tom Wachowski from the Sonic the Hedgehog movies, who was amazing in that. He was amazing in that, but I felt really bad for him in Hop. Like, he looked like he just wanted to get out of the film. So, yeah, the film has an... I do, I will say, the film has an interesting concept. Like, I do like how um, the Easter bunnies, how they're presented as, like, they're almost, like, it feels almost Christmassy, weirdly. I don't know. The fact that they have their own sleigh and the way they hide the egg Easter eggs is kind of like how Santa puts the um, presents underneath the Christmas tree. It's, it's very peculiar, but it, it, I, I let it slide. And um, what I do um, actually, like, think the character of EB, the main protagonist, is actually written well, who just wants to, you know, do his own thing, like, play drums, like, that's a great dream and all, but I think EB just felt like he was being a bit too over the top sometimes, and the fact that he's with for James Corden, James Corden, it doesn't help, because I'm not really a fan of that actor, so, yeah. Um, the musical numbers were very off-putting for me, and I would have enjoyed this if it wasn't for the, gosh dang it, the awful climax, like, dude, for some reason, the villain is a chick that wants to be, you know, an Easter bunny. And then for some reason, they become so evil that they grow bunny ears and teeth. I'm not, I'm not joking. Watch the film. You will regret it. But 
a, a, a chick literally gets the ears and teeth of a bunny. You can make this up, viewers. You just can't. So yeah, Hop was a disaster, and it's good that Illumination has not made another live-action movie. Well, yet. Hopefully, never. But yeah, Hop, definitely D-tier. It's the worst. Okay, next we have um, the Lorax. Okay, um, this is a bit of an unpopular opinion. I actually like the Lorax. I don't know why. I think this one actually gave more, um, a bit more character to the Lorax in general, because I thought he was a bit too uh, timid and weak in the uh, original animated film. Um, which is like half an hour long. In this one, they actually gave him more personality and made him look more tough. And, and also, he's voiced by Danny DeVito. Like, I love Danny DeVito, so I have to give points to the film for that. Um, and I think the, the, the film's concept is actually um, not, not terrible, but I think it's handled well. You know, a young kid named Ted uh, wants to impress a girl who is voiced by, no joke, um, Taylor Swift, I think. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, she loves trees, so he has to, you know, plant a seed to make a tree grow for her, you know? She loves the nature. You have to do what you want to win your, your crush, you know? And it, it's just me, but whenever I watch the film, I think Ted and um, I, I forgot the girl's name that he's in love with. It reminds me of Dipper and Wendy from Gravity Falls. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the height difference, short boy and tall girl. It reminds me of Gravity Falls a little bit, you know, Dipper, you know, Dipper and Wendy. But I will say this, um, Ted gets gets much more action than Dipper ever will, so <laughs> that's a little sad. Uh, the musical numbers were meh, really. They weren't amazing, but they weren't terrible, really. It, it could have been worse. Uh, the Once was honestly a very unlikable character, but he had a re he gave reasons for what he could do. The film is funny every now and then, but th sometimes I think the comedy is handled a, is, is a bit too far. Like, there are moments when they literally are, are, are hurting a kid, like a poor young little, I think it's a bear, they are harming a little child, and I feel like they're doing that too much. It's like, come on, child abuse is not funny. Like, it didn't work in Battle for Dream Island Teapot when Snowball did that to Grassy to make him a punching bag. It didn't work then, it, it didn't work with the Lorax. So, yeah, child abuse is not funny, movies. Let's not do that, please. I don't care if you're animated, it doesn't matter. Let's not do that. So, yeah, the Lorax, I would give it, honestly, a beat here. Okay, and then we have... <sighs> Despicable Me 2. <sighs> um, not bad for a sequel. Okay, I will say the villain is kind of weak. El Marcho as a villain is kind of weak. And I feel like the reason why they made the minions go purple and all berserk is just because they can have the minions get more attention. There is way too much focus on the minions in this one and less Gru and the girls. I want a movie to just be mostly about the Gru and the girls. I want to see more Margot, Edith, and Agnes. And when they did have their screen time, it just felt too short for me, personally. The new character of Lucy was nice. I thought she was good as a character. But, and whilst the um, Pharrell Williams sequence of Because I'm happy, clap along, if you feel. I thought that was nice and all. But the movie itself just feels a little bit underwhelming. Especially after the greatness of the original. So, yeah. This is me too. I'll put it in the C tier. It could have been worse, but it could have also been a lot better. Okay. The Secret Life of Pets. Now, I'll be honest with y'all. When I watch this film, it feels like a a poor man's version of Toy Story. Like, think about it. The dogs are basically the toys, you know? The owner leaves the room, they can move and do whatever they want. Free to roam, but when they come back, they have to, like, be back in their position, I guess? Um, uh, Max, the main character, has this new... His owner, Katie, gets a, gets a new dog, which is Duke, who is basically, like, Buzz Lightyear to Woody. Like, when Andy gets Buzz for his birthday, but then Woody feels like he's going to replace him, you know? All that jazz. Yeah, the film is literally a poor man's version of Toy Story, but isn't terrible, but it really isn't that good either. You know, I found it a little bit underwhelming. Uh, a lot of the characters were a little bit forgettable. There were some memorable characters, like, I really liked Kevin Hart's character as Snowball the Bunny. Like, he was cute, but also evil. He was like that bunny from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which is like, the white bunnies are always evil viewers. Just don't trust the white bunnies viewers, just don't. And in My Little Pony French was Magic, Angel, White Bunny, evil, worst character ever. Like, seriously. Oh my gosh. I wish, I would love to go into Equestria, grab a gun, and just shoot that bunny. I'd be, that, I would gladly do that. Anytime, any day. I think we should all agree on that. Right? 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 Okay, let's continue. Um, yeah, so you can have a pets. It's some... Um, Again, it could have been better, but it, it, it's not terrible. So, 
I'll I'll give it like a low B tier really. Because my dad and I do like the um section where Max and Duke go into the um sausage factory and there's like a bunch of sausages and they're all sentient and they sing this like crazy cover of like dun, 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 dun. I don't know why my, my dad and I really like that scene. So yeah, for that reason, I'm giving it a B tier. Okay, then we have, oh boy. I'm gonna take the hood off for this. We have the Minions movie from 2015. Yeah, if you thought the Minions weren't already popular and getting too much attention, they get their own spinoff movie. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be a prequel to how, you know, Gru and them met, but that was really the only part I was really interested in. Them getting to meet. And apparently, Minions have been around longer than we have. They served a dinosaur. Uh, they served Fred, Fred Flintstone, which is a caveman. They served Napoleon. They served Anubis, you know, the Egyptians. And after after their fail with um, Napoleon, they, they got into a cave and they said that for like many years. I think the movie did that just so that the Minions can't serve you know who during World War II. Yeah, I bet they did that just so they can't. I bet they did that just so they can't serve him. I bet you that's why they did that. Um, but yeah, um, Kevin, of course, is gonna get a ferocious villain for his crew, of course, and he gets the aid of um Stuart and Bob. I think Kevin Stuart and Bob as as, as a trio, I think they're pretty fun. They actually are likable characters and they have their funny moments, honestly. Um, and um. I think Scarlet Overkill as the like, I guess you could say like main antagonist voiced by Sandra Bullock was really good. I, I actually liked her as a character. She was, was really good. Um, but that's really about it. Like this film just feels, again, it, it just, it, it's funny, but like it doesn't have enough depth to it really. And for that reason, I have to put this in the C category along with Despicable Me 2. I'm afraid it just feels underwhelming. But yes, it's funny at times, but it's not funny that I like the film. It's funny like, okay, that was funny, but like, I want more. I like, I need more, like, character development, really. I don't get that in this film, really. That's a problem. Okay, then we have Sing. Okay, we have Sing. Okay, I'll be honest with y'all, I really like Sing. Guilty pleasure. I enjoy some ju ju jukebox musicals where a bunch of cute animals, you know, sing a lovely song. It's really good. And I, I think all the characters have done really well. Uh, Matthew McConaughey's Buster Moon is very well played. Um, Taron Egerton as um, Johnny the Gorilla. That was really great. Uh, Scarlett Johansson was Ash the um, uh, um, Porcupine. Again, really good. Tori Kelly. Yeah, real singer Tori Kelly was uh, Mina the um, Elephant. Like, seriously, they the, 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 the cast was great. And all the songs they chose were just really great. They made me laugh. They made me smile. They made me dance along or sing along even. So, yeah, um, Sing is just a great film. And actually has a really good message, which is... Don't let fear stop you from doing the things you love. And that's a problem. I feel like the other Illumination films I just mentioned, like um, Seek Lover Pets, Minions, and Seek Me 2, and even Hop, they didn't really have like a very strong moral message like every Pixar film does. And that's why Pixar is amazing. They have a good message in each of their movies, sometimes more than one. But Illumination is kind of lacking with that. They just want to make entertaining movies. But Sing actually deals with important stuff. Like, you know, your family, like for Johnny, he's part of his family, well, no, his family, his father is part of this, you know, gang that robs banks, you know, he doesn't like that, so he wants to do what he wants. He doesn't want to be what his dad wants to be, so he wants to do his own thing. See, that's relatable, you know? I can see people relating to that. You can't deal, you can't handle your boyfriend, and then he cheats on you. That's what happens to Ash, you know? Financial problems for Buster Moon. Again, it's really well done. So yeah, for that reason, I think Sing deserves to be in the A tier, without a doubt. The only reason, I think, I do prefer this pick for me, the first movie, only because it has, like, a real villain, honestly, because of Vector. But Sing doesn't really have a villain, so for that reason, I can't say it's better than it, just pick for me. But I still like it, I really like it. Okay, then we have... <sighs> Despicable Me 3. This one is easily the worst of the franchise. I think what they try to do is just wrong. So like, if your plot for the third movie or fourth if you count the Minions movie is that the main protagonist has a long lost twin brother, you know that you're getting lazy. DreamWorks is gonna do it with the third Trolls movie. I don't think that's gonna work. So 
This film doesn't know what to do. It's like, oh yeah, Gru has a long-lost brother named Drew, and he's also voiced by Steve Carell. Pretty cool, huh? And, um, yeah. Yeah, Drew as a character was completely irritating. That is not how you write a character. He was irritating the whole film. I just, mm, I wanted to punch him. So bad. Um, the minions go to jail. I thought that was a really funny moment, but again, the, the, Every, pretty much every scene we see of them in the trailer was in the movie, so it was underwhelming in the end. Even though I wanted to see them in jail more. That was a really cool moment, but then they just kind of get out really quickly, really. You know? And, um... I do like the moment where Lucy is trying to bond with the girls, you know, trying to be a good mother. I liked that. But that felt like a side story from a different movie, almost. Because it just, it, it kind of cut back too quickly to Gru and Drew. That was the problem. And in all honesty, the villain was good. I think Bulbasaur Brat, I think he is, who's uh, supposed to be like an 80s kind of dude who's stuck in the 80s because he's a child star or something. I forgot how his origin goes, but I know he was a child. I think he was a child star in a show, but then he just got old or something. I don't know. I know he says, I've been a bad boy. I actually liked him as a villain. He was actually written pretty well, but Vector is way more entertaining and actually funny and actually feels like he, has a, he actually has a motivation almost, whereas... Bulbasaur Brat is just a spoiled, well, brat, really. He's basically what if Diamond Tiara was a villain in My Little Pony. A brat who is spoiled and doesn't really have a motivation to do anything bad. They just want to be a brat. <laughs> but either way, Despicable Me 3 just has so many issues that I have to put in the D tier along with Hop. It's not as terrible as Hop, but still, it should, it deserves to be in the D tier. It really does feel unoriginal, and I do not appreciate that. The only time when I really laughed in the film was when Gru and Drew were trying to climb up the, um, the secret lab lair of um, Bulbasaur Brat, and then they connect to each other, and they look like a yin yang symbol because they're both black and white. I thought that was really good, but that's it. That's the only time I really laughed was when they made the yin yang symbol. Like it was, it was good, but that's it. That's just one funny moment. That's not enough viewers. <laughs> it really isn't. Okay, then we have the Grinch. No, 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 not the good Grinch film from the olden days. I know not the amazing Jim Carrey performance. I love. How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. That is one of my favorite Christmas films ever. I love it. But The Grinch by Illumination is what people pretty much say about the Lorax. Like, I personally think the Lorax was done well, but this one, The Grinch, was not done well at all. Okay, the, the character of Grinch didn't feel as, uh, like, as, like, you know, mean and evil as he was in the original ones and he was way too nice to his dog Max. I feel like he needed to do some more despicable things to him like for example in the Jim Carrey film there's a point where Grinch actually yeets Max out of his house like that is like animal abuse but at the same time that's something that a Grinch would do. In this film he's way too nice to him. He doesn't even yell at him enough. Like he in th there's a point where he says Max but in the Jim Carrey film it's like Max yeah, which one is more intimidating? Exactly. And I, I have nothing wrong with the fact that it's voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch. I, mean, I have nothing wrong with that at all. But you see, there are way too many pop songs in this film. It's a Christmas film. Why does it have pop songs in it? I don't understand. And Cindy Lou Who, I think, was written a lot better in the Jim Carrey film. It, I think everything was just done better in the Jim Carrey film. This just felt like a waste of time. It just wanted to be like, yay, another version of Grinch. Oh my gosh. But yeah. It was just so underwhelming, and I really do not appreciate that. It wasn't terrible, but I'm still gonna put it in the. I'm still gonna put it in the C category. It could have been worse, but it just does so much wrong that I just had to put it in the low C tier. Okay, then we have um. Oh, the Secret Life of Pets two. I'll be honest with you, this was actually a lot better than the first one. This is why I think the first one should have been a, a bunch of companions, or you know bunch of cute animals just doing their thing you know not trying to go over the top like i think the first movie was being way too much like toy story whereas the second movie actually felt original it actually had conflict characters actually developed and actually did some really cool things you know i really appreciate that so yeah Sigma pets 2 it gets a low a tier i first thing in despicable me but Sigma pets 2 is is low a okay then we have sing 2 um another honestly pretty all right sequel i will say the ending is amazing but the build-up to it is not is a bit underwhelming just a bit like i feel like this i think two's concept feels a bit too similar to the first one like buster moon is lying you know and um the characters kind of go through different development and 
I feel like they weren't as memorable as they were in the first one. Like in the first one, they had better development. Like Ash had to deal with her boyfriend. Johnny had to deal with a, his broken heart because of his father. Rosita had to take care of, you know, her kids. It's which is like, why? I think she has 25. Dang. Um, Mina had to, you know, um, stand up for herself and, you know, become more confident and don't be, and, you know, not be shy, you know, kind of like Fluttershy. But in this movie, she's shy because of, she has to do a romance scene. It's understandable, but I felt like she was more confident enough to handle it, you know? So I feel like the movie was just dumbed down the main characters to make them go through development again, you know? And they weren't as satisfying as they was in the first movie. But the second, but the, but the climax was great. I really did like the climax. I'm gonna put this film in the B tier for two reasons. Again, one, the climax. Also, they also had a better, they also had a real villain, which was Jimmy Crystal, who's basically like an evil version of, um, I guess you could say Simon Cowell, really. <laughs> I did like the song choices as well. The song choices were great as well. I think the first one did. I think the first one did a lot better because I felt young again. But Sing Two does also have um, Portia, the new character. I'll be honest with y'all. I had a crush on her. I'm not a furry, but I had a crush on this anthropomorphic animal. Like <laughs> the things I do to her. Like oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, is this a Sky Fi show? I liked her. But yeah, I'll put it in the B tier. I'll put it like better than Secret Life of Pets and below the Lorax. I think the Lorax had, had, was more entertaining. Okay, then we have, oh boy, Minions, The Rise of Gru. Surprisingly, this is actually a good film. I actually think this is a lot better than the Minions film and a lot better than Sickle Me 2 and 3 combined. Now, is it, is it, is it as great as Sickle Me 1? Heck no, but this one, actually had meaning to it. There was actually a good message to it. And this actually made me care about the minions more. I listen, I don't hate the minions or even love them, but I thought they were fine, fun, fun in the first movie, but in the second and third, and even the minions movie, they were kind of getting a little bit irritating for me. But in this film, they were actually funny and actually felt meaningful. They were actually caring for Gru. And I really liked that. And the villains, uh, I forgot they were cool, but I know one. Of, I know a couple of the most called cool, Nunchuck and Bell Bottom and uh, Wild Knuckles, I believe. I forgot the other ones, but uh, the Vicious Six. There we go. The Vicious Six. Um, I thought they were pretty cool as villains. Not as cool as Vector or Belvis or Brad, but they were still cool, honestly. And uh, the song choices were actually done well. And I really loved the part where the minions try to learn kung fu with the spirit of you know Michelle Yeoh from Everything Everywhere All at Once. Like that film was really the best film of 2022. Sue me, but um. Yeah, Minions Rise of Gru just did everything that I think the first Minions should have done. And, you know, it felt special to me. And I really liked the ending when um, Wild Knuckles tells Gru, shoot for the moon. It felt like a, it was literally foreshadowing the first movie. And I really, really enjoyed that. There were even references to the first movie. And I really liked that. So, yeah. Um, this, so, yeah, Minions Rise of Gru was pretty dang good. Um, I don't think it was amazing. So for that reason, I'm putting it at the top of the beat here, without a doubt. It was that, it was really well done. Okay, finally, we have the Super Mario Bros. movie. Again, I've already talked about my feelings on this film in my spoiler-free review. Don't worry, there's no spoilers in that video, but I will do a spoiler film review at some point, maybe next week when I watch it again. But I will say this, the Super Mario Bros. movie is S tier. What else can I say to you? It's the best Illumination movie. I don't care what y'all say. It's the best Illumination movie and it will always be for me. Always. There we go. That's that's it. That's all I'm going to say. It's the best Illumination movie. That's it. Anyway, I love you all and I shall see you all in the next video, which will be either tomorrow or maybe two days or something. But either way, if you enjoyed this particular video, leave a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're interested, follow me on Instagram. Link down below. And until then, stay positive, keep calm, stay safe, be incredible. As always, Brony on. Peace.